What's going on everybody c4 here welcome back to the channel today we're continuing with the 32 team seven round mock draft series with a team that holds the 28th pick in the first round that is the baltimore ravens a team we thought might be the super bowl champs unfortunately things kind of fizzled out but i'm so happy I'm a, i've been a lamar jackson stan since like his you know what was it sophomore season junior season second year at louisville that he was really getting goddamn good i was like yep Went on my way. I remember I was just like, let's go. Oh, Louisville's playing North Texas Mean Green. Let's just go watch Lamar Jackson make guys look like fools and stuff. So I was really, really excited. I'm a neutral fan. I'm not a Ravens fan. I don't like him. I don't hate him. But I'm a big time Lamar Jackson fan. Seeing him take off, it's awesome. So let's see how we can help him out here just a little bit. So looking at the offense here, through the power of Madden 20 to figure out how we should help them in the draft. Offensively, they brought back Gus Edwards. That's really the only change from the skill position standpoint. Probably could use a little bit more help at wide receiver for sure. Sneed is, it is what it is really. Sneed, obviously you got the speed and, 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 and just explosiveness in Hollywood Brown. You got a guy that's a little bit more of a project, but elite athlete in Miles Boykin. So, you know, maybe can add in and throw in another wide receiver here. I know a lot of Raven fans do want them to continue to get that. You got Mark Andrews, excellent tight end. Offensive line, got to find a way to replace Marshall Yana. Got to be tough to replace a guy that's most likely going to the Hall of Fame. But we will we'll try to help them. Uh, on the interior there. Maybe they take Makari, who actually played pretty well, and you can flex him out. But I will, I will, spoiler alert, in this draft, have them try and acquire an interior lineman to add some depth there. But really, the offense, just, you know, maybe get a little bit young, maybe throw in another running back. They like to have a stable of backs here. But a wide receiver, maybe a guard. But other than that, it's pretty solid. Flipping to the defense, though, a little more... Missing pieces, addition, subtraction, all that stuff on the front. We got Brandon Williams, Derek Wolf coming over from the Denver Broncos. Calais Campbell getting him pennies on the dollar for the Jags. Obviously, he's a veteran, a little bit more of a win now move. Michael Pierce hit the market. No longer the team. I actually can't remember the top of my head what team he went to. Uh, Ravens? No, he's not from the Ravens. But the Rams? Maybe the Rams? I honestly, my apologies, can't remember. But no worry, we're talking about Baltimore. We're not talking about, we're talking about who's here, not who left. That front three, still pretty damn solid. The, uh, the secondary, really good. Marlon Humphrey, I can't believe the fact that, like, what have they given up to get Calais Campbell and Marcus Peter? Like a fifth and a sixth round pick or something stupid like that? Uh, that is the best, I think, one-two punch in the NFL. Marcus Peters, Marlon Humphrey. You throw in Jimmy Smith, who's still really good. Tavon Young can play nickel. Yeah, good night. You throw in Earl. Oh, you just got Earl Thomas as well. Okay. Uh, Jalen Ferguson emerging as a rush linebacker. Judon, they got him back. I think they just tagged him, but the inside is pretty soft. LJ Fort coming over from the Eagles. Played pretty well, but I definitely don't think you want to rest on your lords. You could debatably say they need two more linebackers. They got Chuck Clark taking over responsibility at strong safety. They let uh, Tony Jefferson, actually, I think they cut him. He's solid. What is he, 25, 24, 25 in that range, but still, uh, you could use another playback maker. I don't know if you just give him that strong safety position. Uh, depending on how the draft goes, but definitely want to improve the inside of this linebacking core. But other than that, man, not a lot of work to do. Let's try to build up some depth, get younger at certain positions, get a linebacker, maybe look at a guard, throw in a wide receiver here, but not a lot. Baltimore is primed to be competitive again next season. So with that being said, let's hop into that seven-round mock draft and see if we can do enough to help them get over the hump in the AFC. Here we go. Baltimore, 28 on the clock. A lot of people thought Given the breakout of Lamar last year, this would be pick 32. But unfortunately, things didn't work out that way. But at pick 28, they're going to be very happy with this pick. They're going to select Kenneth Murray, linebacker from Oklahoma. 6'2", 240 pounds, high character linebacker. Who I think would walk in, be inside linebacker, one on the Ravens roster. Great athlete, 4'5", in the combine, 38-inch vert. Elite sideline ability, brings crazy production. Uh, even though he did have a breakout year last year, the box score numbers have always been there. 335 tackles, 37 TFLs in his career. And I think when I'm looking at this defense, he can almost bring C.J. Mosley caliber play for a, lineback for a linebacker core that's always solid. But, I mean, you got L.J. Fort there right now, Chris Board. You know, there comes a point in time. You don't got, you know, the old man. The old man is not there being able to find some, like, UDFA historical black college linebackers and getting Pro Bowl potential of them. You got a new era, new front office, burn a premier pick on a sure thing in Kenneth Murray, a guy that can be a leader and could be the next C.J. Mosley for this Ravens defense. Going to the second round at pick 55, I was letting Kyle Duggar, safety of Lenore Ryan, 6 feet tall, 215 pounds, great athlete again, 449, 42-inch vert, who is the 2019 D2, Division II defensive player of the year. He fits the 
kind of a, I more so see him as a safety. I think right now you got Chuck Clark, who's solid, could be upgraded on, but he's solid, a six-round pick in 2017. But I think Kyle Duggar should be a box safety, but he kind of also fits the Anwusor mold. I always butcher that name, but he was pretty damn good. Really, really small linebacker, linebacker safety hybrid, exactly what Kyle Duggar does. And instead of him, he's a lot more upside and explosiveness. So he is that hybrid. And I think more so I would have him be the box safety there. But his versatility is key and will be huge. And they would be able to find a way to make him. Martindale will be able to get him evolved on the defense. There's just there's just no way you would be unable to capitalize on that versatility and that athletic ability if you're the Ravens. Staying in the second round at pick 60, a value pick might not be there. There are some first-round buzz around his name. That's Brandon Ayuk. Wide receiver from Arizona State, 5'11", 205. An outside wide receiver. Limited but impressive college production. Really only one year where he had 1,200 yards, 8 touchdowns in 2019. He brings explosiveness, 4.50, 40-inch vert to complement the speed that's already there in Hollywood Brown. And last year's just, oh, okay, he's a freak from the combine in Miles Boykin out of Notre Dame. Uh, the buzz around him, like I said, kind of could go in the first round. Might not be there at pick 60. But I think if, if, if Baltimore could find a way to add, you know, if not a pretty damn close to A-tier athletes in Murray and Duggar on the defensive side, and then you throw in Ayuk on the offensive side, this is going to be just, you know, add, how, how are you going to stop him? How are you gonna, especially on offense. A guy like Ayuk, pairing that with the speed of Hollywood Brown, the speed and size of Miles Boykin. You got, you know, Willie Sneak and working the slot. That is just, that's a lot of headaches for opposing defensive coordinators. So Ayuk in the second round, those first three picks would all be home runs, in my opinion, for the Baltimore Ravens. Going to the third round of pick 92, I was looking Shane Lemieux, guard from Oregon, 6'3", 310, four-year starter at Oregon. Lemieux is a high-floor, modest ceiling lineman who will immediately solidify the interior offensive line depth for the Baltimore Ravens and potentially compete for that left guard spot. They got Bradley Bozeman, six-round pick, Alabama, I think. But right now, really, the only starting caliber guard, I think, on the roster is Ben Powers. It's going to be interesting. They got some questions to do at center because Makari from Cal, UDFA at center. But if you're going to go Skura or one of them, maybe they can flex one, the odd man out there to a guard spot. But as it stands right now, still, even with that potential decision looming, they could add some interior offensive line depth. And for how important the run game and establishing the line of scrimmage is for the Baltimore Ravens, you need depth. If some guy gets out, it could potentially cripple the rest of the offensive line. So you need to have a lot of depth, guys that can always step up at a minute's notice to fill in. And a guy like Lemieux in the third round gives you that insurance policy and potentially gives you a open competition for that left guard spot. Going to the fourth round where they have three fourth round picks. First up at 106, I was letting Afrini Jennings, outside linebacker, really we will just classify him as a linebacker from Alabama, 6'2", 255. He was a 3-4 outside linebacker in Alabama who brings really more as a linebacker than he is an edge. When you talk about 3-4 linebackers, you're like, oh, well, he's an edge rusher. Not really the case with Jennings. Um, Jennings has coverage ability. He showed that in 2018 where he led Alabama, led them. That's including corners and safeties with 12 pass breakups. And he showed a little bit of rushing ability a little bit in 2019 where he finished with 83 tackles, 12.5 TFLs, and 8 sacks. So he's a very versatile player. Uh, I think he could play any linebacking spot for the Baltimore Ravens. And this is just a team, again, that needs linebacking depth. Yeah, LJ Fort coming over from my Eagles kind of worked. But outside of that, you know, you got your outside handle, but your inside is really soft. You're like a guy that does a lot of side crunches, but you're not doing four crunches. Your love handles are gone, but the inside, you get the keg there. Because you got Judon, Jalen Ferguson, third-round pick last year. They're, they're, they're doing fine on the outside. You still have Tyus Bowser, second-round pick 2017. Still trying to, you know, really find his, his groove. But the inside... You got LJ Ford, who was a value pick, but other than that, that's not going to get by. So if you get a way to get Kenneth Murray in the first round, you get Afrini Jennings in the fourth round, you're going to feel a lot more confident about the inside, the middle of that linebacking core. Going to the second fourth round pick at 129, I was letting Shadiq Charles tackle from LSU, 6'4", 320. Red flag player, he's had some off the field issues, but every year it feels like in the draft, Ravens will get a red flag player, be it Free agency, UDFA, somewhere in the draft, and, and there is such a strong organization that these guys tend to work out. I think Charles can be that guy. He's a good athlete who should walk into the Ravens, maybe swing tackle spot right away. Like who's good, who's their swing tackle right now? Will Holden. They got veteran Andre. You know they don't really have one. So I think a guy like Sadiq Charles, because of the athletic ability, can be the swing tackle. Play, put some really good tape forward this year before he has some of the off-field issues for the national champion LSU Tigers. 
with that size too and the athletic ability, maybe you could eventually slide into guard and add more interior offensive line depth, if not more competition for one of those two guard spots. In their final fourth round pick at 134, Idol selecting Eno Benjamin, running back from Arizona State, 5'8", 205 pounds. Ravens like having a stable of running backs. They currently need to find their fourth running back, and I think that could be Eno Benjamin. Last two years, he's been first team pack 12. He's a do-it-all running back. Last two years as a starter, 2,700 rushing yards, 26 touchdowns to go with 75 catches, 600 yards, and four tutties. He's a slasher-style runner, and he's going to be really a good complement to the power options they have in Mark Ingram and Gus Edwards, as well as adding competition and just being another, you know, slashing tandem with the fourth-round pick out of Oklahoma State last year. Justice Hill, who looked to be a little disappointing last season, but this is a team that is going to, like most teams in the NFL anyways, roster four running backs. And uh, they also didn't play fullback in right guard, who's a two-way player. But I think Eno Benjamin, that's good value here in the fourth round. And again, just really compliments. You have two power guys, two finesse guys, and that's exactly how they want to keep balance to their offense. It's just relentless. It's just running back after running back, shuffling in, shuffling out. Good if there's an injury to keep things going for Lamar Jackson. Fifth round, 157. I look like Bravian Roy, defensive tackle from Baylor, 6'1", 330, a nose tackle with a very good motor. Had a breakout 2019 for the Baylor Bears, 61 tackles, 13 TFLs, 5.5 sacks. I think there's really good value. The the guys that are nose tackle, that are run stuffers, they always fall in the draft. I, I will never forgive myself when I had Andrew Billings at a Baylor. Another Baylor Bear. I had him as a first-round talent. He went like the fourth or fifth round. And then now he just got paid decent money, I think, from the Cleveland Browns. These guys always fall, and teams that run that 3-4 that are looking for a run stuffer, they, they always benefit from it. And so the Ravens are sitting here going, okay, you know, we got Brandon Williams, but we just lost Michael Pierce for a run stuffing uh, type, you know, DN, D-tackle D type player. And we're going to go, oh, let's replace him with Bravion Roy. Fits good. And I think he has immediate in, uh, interior defensive line depth here for the Baltimore Ravens. And then finish up the draft in the seventh round. I have the Baltimore Ravens select Levante Taylor, defensive back from Florida State, 5'8", 175 pounds, versatile defensive back. Some people say he's a nickel. Some people say he's a free safety. Again, it's just depth to have back there in the secondary. Uh, he ran a 4-3 at his pro day. And it's just, again, seventh round, get some value there and get a guy that can tack on the 53 with the special teams. So that will do it here, guys, for the Baltimore Ravens seven-round mock draft. Let me know how you feel about it in the comment section below. As always, your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's C4, saying peace.